Here's the thing, y'all. I don't even know if I know for sure that I understand what people mean when they say unpopular opinions or un unpopular makeup opinions. Because I see it floating around, I see people's videos that are like, my unpopular opinions. And I do even feel like I have watched one or two of them, but I'm worried that what I think I mean by unpopular opinions, I mean, I don't think what I mean, I know what I mean. <laughs> I just wrote down some things that are true of me, some preferences that I have as a consumer of makeup, as a wearer of makeup, and some reactions that I've had to makeup formulas that I feel like are unpopular in that my way of doing it or my reaction goes against the grain. I feel like I'm a bit of an outlier with the way that I approach these things. Hopefully that makes sense, at least for this video, and hopefully it aligns with what people mean when they say unpopular makeup opinions so that you didn't click on this video hoping for something else. If this is your first time to my channel, then I'm so glad that you are here. I'm Hannah. I love beautiful things. I love beauty. I do have ways in which I diverge from, I feel like, popular opinion on YouTube in general, most notably in the way that I keep my own makeup collection. I try not to let it get too out of control. I'm definitely like a quality over quantity person. I know I'm not the only quality over quantity person out here. I'm not trying to say that I am. Uh, I talk about focusing on using what I have as an alternative to always just chasing like a new best version of, of stuff, of makeup stuff. And if that kind of content sounds good to you, I hope that you'll subscribe. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. I wrote down, I actually just wrote down four things, but I feel like that's good because I, I think with at least three of them, mm, at least two of them, but probably all of them, I'm gonna like hold forth because you know me, it's hard for me to be brief about anything. But the first one is like, I, I put them in like uh, ascending order of meta-ness or like uh, ascending order of grandeur. Grandeur is not really the word. Is this one of those days when I shouldn't be filming? I feel like this is one of those days. I shouldn't be filming. We're going from the pedestrian to the more theoretical. The first one that's an unpopular opinion is like about a specific formula. It's just a makeup formula that everyone likes. That's like the world's holy grail that I've finally admitted. I'm finally admitting here on camera for the first time and kind of admitting to myself for the first time that I don't like. So that's gonna be the first thing. And then the last one is more about like, what are we doing here as humans on this planet? <laughs> Not that that's an unpopular opinion, but you'll, you'll see. This is the formula. I'm fine. I've finally admitted to myself and I'm now admitting to you guys that I don't like the formula of Charlotte Tilbury's Matte Revolution lipstick. I feel like I've referred to it obliquely here and there lately. I was talking about how I like the ZC formula better. Then that made me think that I actually don't like this formula at all. I, I have three. The colors are so beautiful. Charlotte Tilbury's colors are just like so compelling. All three of these were gifts to me and so I, I treasure them for that reason as well. Bond Girl is a, a really great, it's like a flat, a berry. I feel like berry is too weak a word. Here's another potential unpopular opinion. I don't like berry colored makeup. I don't really like pink makeup and I don't really like berry colored makeup either. Maybe that should have gone on the list, but there's a freebie. I think people sometimes think of this as a berry, but I don't. I think of it as one of those nudie reds. It's like a really wearable, flushy, nudie red, like you've been biting your lips and it turned this color. It's not a mauve either. I don't really like mauve either. You know what? While we're talking about unpopular opinions, don't like pink, don't like mauve, don't like berry, but I do like this color a lot. And um, I also have Legendary Queen, which I think was limited edition. A stunning blue red and you know what I don't really like blue red either I'm full of unpopular opinions I didn't realize I I actually kind of struggled to come up with the list but now that I'm here now that we're filming it I'm like unpopular opinions to the left of me unpopular opinions to the right of me I don't really like blue reds on the lips but um this to me is like a blue red that's grounded in something a little bit dusky. And then the third color is Bond Girl, which was a gift from Prachi. And it's so, did I just say Bond Girl? It's not, it's Birkin Brown. And it's so beautiful. It does lean more when I put it on. It's got a little bit more of like a fleshy red in it, which is just really interesting. It's not as straight brown. It's not as straight of a brown as it looks in swatches when it's applied. It's not as straight of a brown as it looks in the pictures. I'll say like on the website and stuff like that. These are three colors that I absolutely love. I just think that 
in terms of uh, the tones and the undertones, they eek sophistication. They make me want to put them all over my lips. For years before I owned any of these, I just salivated over these lipsticks. Looking at the pictures online, the swatches, looking at people wearing them on social media. I wanted them and wanted them and wanted them. I would try, they're expensive. So I think that that was what kept me from ever buying one for myself, but I would like try them on when I went to Nordstrom. I had like an individual fantasy about many of the colors themselves and I wanted many of the colors. So when I finally received some of them as gifts, it was like I didn't dare not love them because I had wanted them for so long, I just assumed that they would be amazing. So they've made it through declutter after declutter. To me, they've always been no brainers. Like, oh, those are some of my favorite lipsticks. I love those lipsticks. The reality is I almost never wear them. I almost never wear them. I feel like I have to be forced to wear them. Or I have to force myself, like I have to do some sort of project. Like I've worn them when I've done a week of red lipstick or when I've done shop my stash. I've often like shopped my stash for them because every time I'm going through shopping my stash, I see them and I'm like, oh yeah, I love those so much, but I don't really wear them. So it's the kind of thing that I often end up shopping my stash for and then I'll wear them during that week, but then they go back in the drawer and I never reach for them. And the reason is that the formula I, I always refer to it as silicone-y. I don't know if that's because there are actual silicones in it, but that to me is the best way that I can represent what it is about it that's difficult for me. The thing that everyone's always raving about with these is that they look matte, but they don't feel matte. They have this slippery feeling to them that doesn't translate to shine. I feel like Charlotte Tilbury was kind of the first person to do that conspicuously in the makeup industry, and that's why these lipsticks got such a good reputation. But the way that that's achieved is it's by having something that's slippery but matte in it. And I feel like that's that's why it reminds me of like a those clear silicone primers that everyone used to use, like mattifying and slippery feeling and slick feeling and pore filling. I feel like these lipsticks feel like they kind of have something like Benefit Porefessional mixed into the base of them. And that's how you get that feeling that it's nourishing. I don't know if they really are nourishing, but the feeling gives the illusion that they're nourishing because it stays slippy, but they look very, very matte. They look, they have like that haze of matte quality. To me, that makes them not a very tenacious formula. I feel like they tend to sort of slide around. Whereas one of the things I like about matte lipsticks is that they'll often have a more grippy, pigmenty feel. I feel like that slippiness, that quality, or whatever is mixed into them to make them have that quality kind of waters down the pigment. And so especially Birkin Brown will tend to like gather and and grab and not apply evenly. I often have the experience when applying these that I apply them and the color looks beautiful. And then as soon as I rub my lips together, the rubbing of my lips pushes the pigment around and sort of disturbs the evenly applied surface of the product. There's something about the quality of the bullet, like the quality of the stuff of it, that just doesn't really suit me. As someone who likes makeup to be very elegant in its formula, apply very well, and wear easily, I feel like I always have to worry that my lips are looking patchy or uneven when I'm wearing a Matte Revolution lipstick. There, I said it, I admitted it to you, I admitted it to myself, <laughs> I know that it's probably an unpopular opinion. And you know, now I'm faced with the question of whether or not as someone who tries not to keep things in her collection that she doesn't really love and use, I'm faced with the question of whether or not I should at some point declutter these lipsticks. I don't feel like I'm prepared to make that decision today on camera, but it might be coming down the pipe. Okay, unpopular opinion number two. I want to look like I have a heat rash. <laughs> I learned this from a comment from someone telling me that I was applying my blush wrong and that it was making me look like I had a heat rash. This happens from, to me from time to time that someone will say something's like wrong or bad about the way that I look, but they'll say it in a creative way. And that creative way will finally give me the language to articulate my true style. Like it will, it'll, I'll be like, oh yeah, that's what I've been trying to do this whole time. It's like the time someone commented, your hair looks like a bad wig. And then I was like, exactly. That's exactly what I'm always trying to get it to look like. I'm always trying to get my hair to look like a bad wig. That's like my aesthetic. And I'm so grateful that someone finally handed me the language. And it was the same this time. Someone was like, you shouldn't bring your blush so far in. I think someone was like, make sure you leave like a finger's width bare underneath the eye, only keep your blush out here. Otherwise you look like you have a heat rash. And I was like, that's, exa that's exactly it, a heat rash. Sometimes they say, I like it when it, look it looks like I have a sunburn. I like it when it looks like I have a fever, but I feel like heat rash is actually, that's the pinnacle, like that fully, 
that that like really truly explains the look that I love. And you know, I think that the thing that I love about it so much is that it's something that would naturally happen on the skin. Like a, a sunburn, a fever, a heat rash, like those are kinds of flushes that come naturally. And I just love that. I mean, one of the things, that's one of the things I really love about blush in general. Eyeshadow, sometimes some people get like darkness on their lids or, you know, you can get smudgy darkness under your eyes naturally if you don't sleep well, or some people just naturally have pigmented lids. So a little bit of pigment, a little bit of pigment around the eyes can sometimes look natural. It can make you look kind of in a sultry way, like that's just how your eyes are. You know what I mean? It is possible to apply eyeshadow in a way that evokes something that happens naturally, but not this. Nobody looks like this on their eyelids naturally. You know, this is adornment. This is this is fun. But blush is so frequently an evocation of something that can happen naturally. So frequently. Like so often when we apply blush, we're trying to make it look like we just have some color in our cheeks. It's like it adds a sense of health, a sense of well-being, sometimes a sense of excitement, like a flush. You, you're worked up or you've been running or, you, you know, you, and I think that that's why I love blush so much because I really like categories of makeup that feel like they could have come from within or that evoke something that comes from within. And I like dramatic makeup. I like it to be statement. So I feel like that's why leaning into blush that looks like a fever or a sunburn or a heat rash is is my thing because it's like the dramatic version of a thing that happens naturally. Whereas if I apply blush really dramatically, but I keep it out here on my cheeks, if I do like a really strong blush draping look, but I make sure, you know, to not bring it all the way in across here, it looks more like makeup. And I think that that's what this commenter was saying. It's like, you're making it look more like a rash and less like makeup. And I'm like, I want it to look <laughs> like a rash. I <laughs> like I want it to look like, something's a little bit wrong, but it's, it's beautiful. You know, like I think that that look in its own way is beautiful. It is a bit of an unpopular opinion. Like people are up here like, girl, you look like you're sunburned or girl, you look like you're, you look like you're sick or something, you know? It's a bit of that today. I don't, I don't really have the full heat rash going on today on my face because I didn't want to do too much on the cheeks. I applied this look on camera and it's probably, you've probably already seen it. It's probably already gone up. Uh, I'll link it below if the video's already up. I did it all across. Like I brought the blush all across. So to me, it looks more just like my face is flushing and less like I applied blush out here on my cheekbones. But I did a pretty light wash of it today because I didn't want to compete with the eyes. So it doesn't look as much like a heat rash, but I do like it when it's really shiny and really blushy all the way across. Okay, the next one is one that is like a consumer. It's like a an unpopular opinion about preferences for makeup consumerism, I feel. It is my preference to have just one color of a formula that I really like. Occasionally two, sometimes for the same reason that I prefer one, two will work, but it is just not my preference to own all of the colors of a formula that I really love. It's never my instinct to do that. I guess if we're putting it in terms of an unpopular opinion, my opinion is that it doesn't make sense to collect them all of a single formula, even if you really love the formula. Of course, when I say that, I mean it doesn't make sense for me. It's my opinion for me. If it makes sense to you, then it's not my opinion that you shouldn't do that or it doesn't make sense for you. I feel like what makes one particular makeup product ideal for me, what makes me really love it, is the combination of the color and the formula. So it's not just a formula that makes something really good, it's the color. And it's not just a color that makes something really good it's the formula. So if you have a really, really gorgeous lip gloss formula, like my favorite lip gloss, formula, actually my favorite lip gloss formula, case in point, my favorite lip gloss formula is the, the Flower Beauty CBD Chill Out Lip Glaze. But the shade that they sent me is a shade that doesn't really work for me most days. It's a really bright pink. So that's my favorite lip gloss formula that I've ever tried. But it's not my favorite lip gloss because the color isn't really on point for me. In order for it to be my ideal product, it has to both have an ideal formula and 
an ideal color. So when I find a product that is my ideal formula and I'm looking at the range, only one of the range of them is gonna be my ideal product, is gonna be the one that's in the color that's ideal for me. And even more specifically than that, the color that's ideal for me for that formula. So if I were to buy multiple versions of it, if I were to buy five, if I really love this lip gloss formula and I were to buy five of them in five different colors, there's always gonna be one of the five that is the perfect color match for the formula for me. And that one's always gonna be better than the rest. It's always gonna be my favorite, my preference. So that means that I just bought five, I bought one thing that I really love and five things that are similar to it, but subpar. That just doesn't work for me. The reason that two will sometimes make sense, like I recently purchased two of the Tower 28 lip jellies and I actually have ended up being glad that I got both of them. Where's the other? I'm wearing one of them right now. I'm wearing Magic. It's the clear with a little bit of gold glitter. And I also got this milky one in oat. And the reason that two works for me in this case is because they serve really, really different purposes to me and I even wear them differently. So I use oat in a really thin layer when I kind of want to make my lips a little bit more pale and blend into my skin a little bit more, but add that slightly nourishing shine. And I use uh, magic when I want to slather on a ton of this stuff and have, them, have it be like really, really shiny and glossy, but kind of magnify the natural color of my lips. I kind of want to apply some more. Speaking of, Talking about it's making me want to put more on. I also find that I can overline considerably with the clear one, but I can't really overline with the milky one. So I apply them differently in that way as well. So I like the formula enough that it makes sense to have two different colors that I reach for for wildly different purposes. I also have two of the Lisa Eldridge velvet lipstick, but one is like a brownie neutral and one is a rich red. And those are two really, that's a formula that I really like. And those are two really, really different looks, two really, really different reasons to use it. I just know that if I also had like a pinky neutral and I also had like a blue red and uh, a more light red, like if I had different neutrals and different reds, then the two that I have would reign supreme and I would always reach for them instead of the other ones. The opinion or like the thing that's specific to me is that I prefer to have just one and then occasionally two of any given formula that I really, really like as opposed to having a whole plethora. And actually one of the things that caused me to learn this or it reinforced this is true for me is that I ended up getting a number of colors of a formula that I really love, which is unfortunately discontinued, the Glossier Vanillic Lip. I love that lip formula. It's probably my favorite of all time and you can't get it anymore, which is really too bad. When I originally got into that formula, I got the color Pony, which is the easiest to wear. It's like this neutral, slightly, uh, it's like a slightly brownie mauve. It's not even brownie, you can't even say that, but who cares, it's not available anymore. It's like a neutral mauve easy to wear. I, I don't like mauve, but I like it. And I also got the red color that I think is really stunning. And so that's what I'm talking about with the Lisa Eldreds. We have like the neutral, easy to wear everyday one. And then you have the really, really stunning red one. That's, that's more statement. Those are two very different products to me. Like to me, they are different products, even though they're the same formula. And then I was like, I love this formula so much. I love it so, so much that I'm going to get more of them. So I ended up getting like two other colors when they came out with like the other red. It's like, a, oh no, it's not Casino. That's the one I love. It's the terracotta red. That's called, I think, Disco. The terracotta red is the really wearable red. When I was like, I'm gonna expand my, I mean, I was like, I love it so much. It's my favorite ever. I'm, I'm gonna do that thing I never do and collect them all, right? So then I got the really bright red, which um, is called Casino. And I also got Driver, which is the more cool toned red when it came out. And then I also got the pink, which is called Genius when they came out with it. And so now I have five of my favorite lip formula of all time. And I was like, for once in my life, it's gonna be a good idea to get all five colors. But I only ever wear Pony and Disco. I only ever wear the neutral mauve and the 
the really wearable terracotta red. Once in a while, I'll put on that really bright red casino and it is beautiful, but it's just like, for me, the thing that's great about that formula is the wearability and casino is the least wearable one of it. So in getting it in a different color, I undermined the thing that I love about the formula. And I really should have just stuck with the two, the two that are perfect for me, because they're the ones for which the color matches the formula for me perfectly. The color is the reason that I love the formula. The reason I think this is an unpopular opinion is that I see people out there being like, I love this formula so much that I had to get them all. I, I mean, I see a lot of people doing that. I feel like that's pretty common and maybe it's just common in like the people who review makeup for YouTube. So I see it a lot cause I'm watching videos on YouTube. But are you, do you guys also do that? I'm curious because I feel like I'm a little bit of an outlier in that I really don't want more colors of something. If I if I have the perfect one, then I rarely feel like I want to collect them all. Okay, and lastly, my last unpopular makeup opinion. This is a more broad one. This won't come as a surprise to most of you, but but I feel like I've never actually said it out loud in the way that I'm about to say it on camera. I think that getting something on a deal or on sale is overrated. I recently posted my Sephora sale survival video. And so that will give you like a little bit more context for this if you haven't watched it already. I'm going to explain myself here as well. And here's why it's an unpopular opinion. First of all, people are all out there on YouTube and in real life being like, I love getting something on sale. I love it when I get a deal on something. I love it when I get something on a deal or I love it when I manage to save a little bit of money on something. It's like people are chasing that feeling of saving a little bit of money on something and much is made of that feeling like m much is made on youtube of how great it is to like get something on a deal and i just think that getting something on a deal is not as great as everyone makes it out to be it's like what is the goal here is the goal to get as much makeup as possible for as little money over the course of your life is it like whoever dies with the most makeup wins maybe for some people i mean i know that people collect makeup differently and some people do feel like the more and more that they get, the better and better they feel and they're really excited to be sitting on like a big pile of makeup because they're true collectors. I'm not arguing with that for you, again, if that's you, it's just not how I am. So that's why it doesn't make sense to me to love getting something on a deal over and over and over again constantly. And that is because the more makeup you buy on a deal, the more money you'll spend. And that's not the deal that I want. I think, I think that the reason that much is made of getting something on a deal is that people like saving money. But if you keep getting stuff on a deal and getting stuff on a deal and buying stuff when it's on sale all the time, you're not saving money. You're spending and spending and spending and being caused to spend by that feeling of getting something at a discounted price. And and you're driven to do that the more you tell yourself the story that that's something that you do and that's something that you love to do. I would rather just moderate and be realistic with myself about how much I can afford to buy and how much I can realistically use and love, like how much I can keep in my makeup mind palace at any one time. I would rather just do that and focus on doing that than acquire more and more and ever more makeup, but acquire that makeup at a price point that's arbitrarily lower than the arbitrary original price point. You know, like the original pr price point is kind of arbitrary. And then arbitrarily, sometimes the price points are lower and the passion for getting something on sale or getting something for less than the original arbitrary price point, the passion for that could, I think, if I were to really savor it or really obsess over it, it could cause me to abandon the process of realistically assessing how much I can afford to spend and how much I really truly want to own and how much I can actually manage to use up in any given like year or two. It's an unpopular opinion because it sounds weird to be like, I think that buying something on sale is, is overrated because of course spending less money, especially for someone who cares so much about budgeting, you know what I mean? Like spending less money than 
you would spend if you bought the thing full price is clearly not a bad thing in isolation. You know, like, of course, if you're going to buy something and it could either cost $30 or it could cost $25, it's great if it costs $25, obviously. Like, I have no quarrel with that. I think, though, that deals and sales in the beauty world, I don't think that it's just that that goes on. I, I don't think that that's what people mean when they say that they love a deal. I think when someone's like, I love a deal, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, kind of what they're saying is like, I'm out here looking for deals. I'm out here using deals and sales as a motivating factor in my decision-making about whether or not I buy stuff. And that doesn't suit me. And that is why I feel like getting something on sale or getting some, getting a deal on something is overrated. Or I guess by phrasing it that way, by being like getting something on sales overrated, by saying it to myself and by saying it on camera and by making myself consciously aware that that's part of my philosophy as a consumer, it gets me free of the temptation to use sales as an excuse for overspending. I know it's an unpopular opinion, but it really, really does help me. And that is it. At the end of the day, I only had four things. Although if you count the fact that I don't like mauve and I don't like blue-toned reds, and what was the other thing I said? I'd, and I don't like Barry, if you count that. Then I had seven. Let me know what you think. I'd love to know what your unpopular opinions are out there, even if your unpopular opinion is that you don't want to look like you have a heat rash. <laughs> Thank you for being here. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 